oh wow, um, that's a pretty hard act to follow, to be honest. Um, um, so I'm sure you've uh, all heard of the, the phrase, there's no I in team. Well, I sort of put a little bit of spin on that because being a pilot, I always say, well, there is an I in pilot. So I say that to my stoker every now and again, just to uh, wind her up a little bit. But um, no, so as, as the um, introducer just said, you know, I am, I'm a pilot for a visually impaired rider and we race on the tandem. Some of you may be familiar with, with the tandem, um, some of you may not, but obviously I'll, I'll give you a bit of a background sort of on, on how I became to become a pilot. You know, um, I, I didn't dream of becoming um, a Paralympic medalist, you know, growing up I remember watching the Athens Olympic Games and watching Chris Hoy um, win, win that fantastic gold medal in the kilometre time trial. And then, of course, Kelly Holmes winning the two gold medals in her, in her events on, on the athletics track. And I remember, I was 14 at the time, and I remember thinking, yeah, that's, that's what I want to do. I want to be Olympic champion. Um, some of you may have that, that dream yourself or aspire to be, you know, other, uh, other things in, in your careers. Um, but I remember thinking, right, I, I was riding a bike at that time. Um, regionally with, with some of my friends. I was quite lucky there was a cycling track down the road from um, where I lived in Hells and back in Birmingham, which I'm sure you probably um, have already um, become aware of from this accent, I'm afraid I can't get rid of it. Um, I've tried, I've lived in Manchester now for four years, but um, so I, of course, you know, I set about that dream and I was very lucky to have been with a, a great group of of cyclists and friends who who knew about the British cycling setup and the world class performance program. So I, you know, I went to college and I did my A levels and you know I trained at the same time and I worked really hard with my coach and and I had I actually applied to become um, a full time cyclist on the academy program. I was a sprinter um, at the same time as I applied for university um, and. I hadn't heard back from British Cycling when, when I had to start uni, you know, I couldn't sort of hold off uni just in case I didn't get this letter to say, yes, we want you to move up to Manchester and become a part of the Great Britain, the Great Britain team. So um, I started uni, I got Freshers' Week done and the week after, and then I got my letter saying, yeah, we want you to, um, to join the programme. So um, arguably, the, you know, I got the best week of uni um, out the way then. <laughs> And then, um, of course, you know, you have to take an opportunity like that when, when it comes. So I moved up to, I think it was pretty much exactly four years ago today, just after the Beijing Olympics and Paralympic Games, when I joined, joined the programme. I moved, I moved from my home into Manchester with um, the other guys on the squad. And I spent a year on the programme as a sprinter. I went to one World Cup in Copenhagen, uh, the February 2009, um, and got fourth place in the team sprint there with a teammate of mine, Anna Blythe. And I spent a fantastic year on the team, um, you know, training alongside Chris Hoy, Victoria Pendleton, and I just learned so much. And every year the squad has a, like a review process for, for their riders, and I got my letter to say, you know, the coaches didn't feel I'd quite have improved enough to sort of warrant an extra year, you know, on, on the programme. And um, going back to sort of what Steve Peters said earlier at the time, you know, my trip chimp just went out of control. I was like, well, why is this? You know, that's not fair. And I called a meeting to, just to ask, really, you know, what, what, why, why have you made this decision? And um, I look back and I think, well, what would have happened if I didn't call this meeting? Because in this meeting is when a fantastic opportunity sort of came about for me. And we sat down and um, my coaches sort of discussed the reasons uh, why why they didn't want me to sort of stay on as a sprinter on the programme. But what came out of this meeting was that the head coach of the paracycling squad had, had um, approached them and asked them to get in touch with me and say, we'd like Helen to come on board and, and try out to be a pilot on the tandem. And first reaction, you know, I was like, well, no, you know, again, chimp. Um, I, I was like, oh, and I can do it on my own, you know, I, I want to race on my own bike, and that's it. You know, I, I knew what the tandem was, and, you know, we train alongside the paracycling squad as able-bodied riders, so I appreciated what, what the tandem was, but I'd never, I'd never even pictured myself, you know, get, getting on the bike itself. And after, you know, a long sort of hard thought, 
I realised that, you know, if it was a way for me to still be able to ride my bike, which is what I love doing, I wanted to give it a go. Um, so I, I got in touch with the coach and I, I said, yes, I'd like to give it a go. But they couldn't offer me a place straight away. And the, the events were different. They were different on the tandem, a bit longer than I was used to as a sprinter. So I had to prove over a hard winter of training that I had the qualities and, and the endurance to be able to do the longer events. And, on, on the tandem, we raced a one kilometre time trial, which is four laps of the track, which is where I won this silver medal. I'm sure you're more, way more interested, and rightly so, in, in these than, than me. <laughs> yeah, um, and I won a silver medal in that, and then the three kilometre shoot, which is 12 laps of the track, so of course a bit, a bit longer, is where I won the bronze medal with, with Aileen McGlynn, my, my stoker. And so I worked hard over the winter, and eventually, you know what, I came up with the goods uh, in the test, and they, um, they offered me a place on the programme which was fantastic and you know people say to me was it was it the right decision to make and of course stood here now with these two hanging around my neck of course I can say 100% you know it, it was it would be nice to be up here holding a gold medal um, I, I was considering painting one of them uh, gold this morning before I came out but hopefully I'll be completing the set one day um, I've been doing it only two and a half years now so to have competed you know, to have been selected for the for the Paralympic Games, you know, I can 100% say, you know, it was, it was the best decision I ever made. And, you know, um, I also think to myself, what, what, what if I'd have said no? And, you know, I'd probably, I definitely wouldn't be stood here. I'd be, you know, I'd probably be, I'd, I'd maybe have a degree now and have joined my team and my friends at uni. And But I know one thing is for sure, you know, I would have sat and watched the, the Paralympic Games this summer, which I'm, I'm hoping a lot of you did, and I would have, Always wondered what what if what if I would have said yes when when that coach approached me and you know it would have been heartbreaking for me to see somebody else in the front of that tandem and so I'm so happy that I'll never have to answer that question. Um, so just a little bit about sort of my role on the tandem. I have I did a little bit of a piece um, for Channel Four before the Paralympic Games um, explaining. I mean you're probably wondering yourself. People say to me. Do you have to pedal and you just sit there and steer, don't you? And and it's it's laughable to me now, but I you wouldn't believe the amount of questions, uh, the amount of times I got asked that question during the Paralympic Games. And but yes, we you know as far as I'm concerned, it, I get on that bike and I pedal as fast as I can to to help my stoker to win that race. And that's the difference between being on the tandem and, and riding on your own. You know, by taking up this place on the tandem, I, I effectively stopped any sort of ambition for myself and my dream to become Olympic champion and that was not going to happen but um, you know being in the Paralympic Games of course the the medal goes to the um, the visually impaired rider who's on the back of the tandem um, but as you can see I have my own medals and that's the reason because we we are equally you know we do the same job and um, I just have to try and keep us in a straight line and as well, so luckily I did I did an okay job at, at this games, but you know, this brings me sort of nicely on to the Paralympic Games. Um, I don't know how many of you sort of watch the Paralympic Games, but I've had so many people come up to me um, and say, you know, we enjoyed the Paralympics so much more than the Olympics, and, and that's fantastic for someone to say. I'm guilty of it myself. Before I became involved in Paralympic sport. I didn't really watch much of it. I watched the cycling because I was a cyclist, but, you know, it's so fantastic for people to come up to me and say, you know, we, we watched every sport in the Paralympic Games. They're telling me about sort of my racing and, you know, my friends, that they were there to watch me win the silver medal, which was so special because they'd never seen me race on the tandem before. They'd never seen Paralympic sport and they were just fascinated and... For me to have been in that Paralympic village as well, with, with all these people with a variety of disabilities, you know, I was in awe because I think what people have started to realise now since the game, you know, there has been a big impact and people are realising that it's not just about disability, it's about ability and, you know, these, these athletes, well, that's exactly what they are, you know, they are athletes, they're elite athletes. Some of the, you know, I've got a teammate of mine, um, Mark Colborne, he... He was in a paragliding accident and he broke his back um, and he, you know, he was told he, he may never walk again and, and, you know, that was two, that was about three years ago now and he's now a world champion, a world record holder and a Paralympic champion on a bike. He's the fastest man for his category on the planet and, 
It's just incredible for me to be. I can't even keep up with him, and he broke his back not long ago, and there's nothing wrong with me. So it's just incredible to be a part of it, and you know, it really has impacted not just sort of the UK, but the whole world. I think people are now excited about you know Paralympic sport and and what these athletes can do. Um, you know, my teammates, they've had to have a change. You know, they've changed their sort of perceptions on what they can do with their bodies. You know, they're getting better and stronger all the time. And, you know, they've been involved in accidents and, you know, the way that they thought their life would plan out. You know, it hasn't gone that way, but they've had a new life. And they turn around to me and say, I would never change it. You know, would, I'd never go back because this is my life now and I love what I do. And that's exactly how I feel, you know. It's not exactly, it's not as drastic as sort of the changes they had to go through, but I had to make a decision, you know, to either go back to sort of a proper job um, and try and get a job or to keep riding my bike and, and try and be the best at something. And, you know, I'll never, I'll never ever regret that. That was the best decision I ever made. And, you know, people... Straight after I won these medals, the, the, the press were asking me, you know, we know you ride on your own, will you ever go back to riding on your own? And I say, no, I say, the tandem is what, what I do, it's, I love the tandem and, you know, I've got unfinished business now, I've got a gold, a silver and a bronze and I, I want a gold medal now with, with one of my stokers. So um, I'm very excited to be a part of, um, para, of Paralympic sport and... I'm excited to hopefully be a part of it in the future and I hope that you're all sort of excited about what, you know, Paralympics, what you know, I think London was, was amazing for, for the sport. I think we put on such a show and we sort of captured the imagination of, of the world um, in, with the Paralympic Games and I can't tell you how incredible it was, you know. We were racing in front of 6,000 people. The velodrome was packed out. There was not one empty seat. And for Paralympic sport, that has just never, ever happened before. And I didn't know that, but now I do. It just really sort of hits home to me. I'm so lucky. I feel so lucky to have been involved in not only my first Paralympic Games, but a home Games as well. You know, it was like a rock concert. Um, being in that velodrome, and you know, we were the rock stars, and we didn't even have to touch the bike. And, and the crowd went completely mental. Um, and so it was just fantastic. And, you know, I wish I could relive it all, you know, all again. But I think what I'm trying to sort of, the message I'm sort of trying to, to bring to you today is that, you know, don't be afraid of taking risks in life. You know, things might not always go the way you'd, you know, envisioned them to go. But, it, you know, you're making a decision could maybe, you know, be the best decision you've ever made as, you know, I hope that I'm proof, proof of that. And, yeah, just, you know, be open to sort of change. And, yeah, I, I hope I've um, helped sort of bring back some of the, the memories. Um, it's nice for me to be able to talk about the, the Olympics and Paralympics again. Um, and I hope, you know, you'll be with us in the future and and excited about Paralympic sport and uh, will keep supporting us as you know you've done a great job over this summer so thank you very much for for listening to me babble on about my my life <laughs> yeah thank you very much